Oh, good. There's a way out this way. Sweet. So, looks like we need to go to Stellar Bay. Again. Oop. Yep, yep, yep. Delicious. Tasty things for me. And then we will fast travel. To Stellar Bay. Uh, but, but. But. Start with there, I guess. Oh, that's Amber Heights and Stellar Bay. So let's do Stellar Bay first, I think. Perfect. Oh, we haven't even talked to Sanjar yet. I don't know what it is, but my gun's been acting funny. Used to be, I had to correct for a bit of leftward drag. Got used to standing just so and... After a while, it put a thorn in my side, something awful. Lately, though, it ain't pulling. That's why my stance much improved. Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? No. Just make sure it's properly logged. I'll note it next to the others, sir. Oh, you're so nice. Okay, hey, Sanjar. Well, new business turns up at last. No. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. That's not why I'm here. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? Gross. He's often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. Um... No, you have a meeting with me. Did you hear that power play, Celia? They don't make them like this anymore in Halcyon. I only hope you don't judge me by my handshake. I will. Now, what business brings you here? Me? I'm charting my own path. Going where the wind takes me. What a charming notion. One doesn't meet many free spirits in Halcyon. Not outside Tartarus prison, anyway. Forgive me, I'd be positively enraptured. Only, I take it this means you aren't here for Saltuna. No, Saltuna is gross. Uh, hey, it could always be both. Now, now, there's no need to humor me. I'm used to this particular letdown. Seems like you're having a rough time, Mr. Sanjar. Are you doing quite all right? Oh, don't worry on my account. This is merely the latest in a long line of professional erotic and... Athletic disappointments. Gross. I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but it seems we're back to the drawing board. Nasty. Um. If you're free from the other corporations, why would you want to bring them back? Surviving alone isn't as easy as it looks. Wamp, wamp. Thanks to the so-called hazard clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. So-called is right. We've got our hazards, but we're still here, damn it. The board took off without so much as a thought for the folks left behind. I don't... Dang it, Captain, that's not <laughs> right. Folks on Monarch shouldn't have to suffer just because the board says so. The dirty words. Now, we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. Uh -huh. And you're tired of scrounging and scraping by, is that it? Yes, freedom is a tempting ideal, but a rather costly paramour. Uh, so what do you mean to do about it? Well... Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. Uh-huh. On our terms, mind you. A lot of good that'll do. I'll just find another reason to turn tail and abandon you. Not if we secure the proper safeguards first. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. Oh, yeah. This lady knows what's going on. Ka-ching! It's true, our Celia is an alarmingly competent middle manager. 
at any other company, she'd be wasted in data entry. The plan she refers to is a two-pronged approach, and the first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. Uh-huh. Uh, you do seem to have a bit of a raptodon problem. And a mantisaur problem. Well, yeah. And a marauder problem. Yeah. Many, many problems, but they can all be solved with a Bolt 52 cartridge. That's what I can. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Uh, the Bolt 52 sounds useful. What is it? Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. Uh, once you had the Bolt 52, what's the other part of your plan? I'll need to gather some supplemental materials, but I mustn't get ahead of myself. You do tend to do that. <laughs> the Bolt 52 will be in the old arms building southwest of town which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in. And these days, it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. I guess that means me. Uh, what? Why are you saying it that way? Saying what? Which way? Arms. You're saying arms instead of arms. That's just what it's called. It's supposed to stand for something, but I forget what. Uh, I'll, I'm sure I'll know when I find it. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Uh, before I go, I need to ask you about something. What can I do for you? Uh, I met Grim, the landing pad guard. I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? He did a bang up job. Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. You're... What else can I do for you? You're welcome. Uh, I need MSI to stop broadcasting. You're jamming Devil's Peak Station. You think we're the problem? Have you even heard the nonsense Graham is spewing? It isn't easy keeping a town like Stellar Bay afloat, especially without the board's backing. We need that frequency to reach our trading partners. Uh, I'll deal with Graham right now. I'm talking to you. My, you know how to take control of a situation, I don't do. you? It's warm in here. Is anyone else warm? What he means to say is that we won't need that frequency once we're able to get MSI restored to the board. And the first step is getting the Bolt 52. All right, I guess I'll be doing that. I have questions about MSI in the good old days. Then it's good that I keep such meticulous notes. Oh, uh, how did MSI get kicked off the board in the first place? I've asked myself the same thing many times, especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. Do you mean that you initiated your own removal from the board? Not intentionally, though that's technically true. For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2. Back then, it was known as Terra 1. <laughs> Terra 1 and Terra 2. I see the board put its best people on that one. Really? I always thought they were refreshingly straightforward names. After all, the whole point of terraforming was to make them Earth-like. Here, though, the results were mixed. <laughs> that ain't fair. They didn't leave on account of the hazards. They left on account of their cowardice. The hazards just gave them a reason to put to paper. Sharp as ever, Nyoka. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. Bump, bump, bump. But not MSI. Our leadership at the time certainly wanted to. But there were others of us who saw an opportunity. The chance to improve working hours and conditions to reform MSI from the ground up. Meaning you and Graham. Ah, so you've heard about our prior acquaintance. Yes. Uh, no sense being coy about it. We're partners now, aren't we? I suppose you're right. Graham's always had a way with words. Strange as it may seem, I suspect he'd have quite the corporate career if he weren't so radical. 
Graham seemed like a reasonable man years ago. We both agreed that MSI's treatment of its workers was untenable. I thought reforms would be enough. I didn't realize you wanted to abolish the corporate system entirely. Until it was too late. Uh, why were you so invested in reforming MSI? Reforms are humane, but they're also good business sense. Exhausted, sick, and malnourished workers are not productive workers. Good point. Even a cursory review of the data bears that out. I hope you'd treat them nice, whether it was good business or not, Mr. Sanjar. That's what being a community means. Treating people right, because it's the right thing to do. Hear, hear. That may not be the way the colony works, but it damn well ought to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A noble thought, Miss Holcomb. Unfortunately, noble thoughts rarely sway board policy. Anyway, Good point. we fact. learned of a loophole in the corporate bylaws that would allow MSI to claim ownership of the entire planet once the other corporations pulled out, uh -huh. creating the perfect environment for us to enact these new reforms. Uh, using the board's own tools against them. Uh, clever. That's what I thought. <laughs> but the senior executives laughed in our faces and insisted we be relocating to Terra 2 along with everyone else. Uh, and yet, here you are. Yes, some of us stayed behind, and as the most senior executive remaining, I ended up in charge of what was left of MSI. I moved forward with our planned reforms, as well as our strategy to assume ownership of the planet. Yet not long after I renamed it Monarch, the other corporations dislodged us from the board and began an official campaign to paint us as lawless savages. How dare they? But why would they do that? I don't know. Everything we did was legal and above board. We followed their rules, and yet they still found reasons to declare us outlaws. See how that works? I do think there's something useful in a governing body like the board. Something that keeps us from anarchy, but I dearly wish it functioned differently. Well, we could do something about that. Why exactly do you want back on the board? Why wouldn't anyone? They own nearly all the resources and infrastructure in Halcyon. Yeah, that'd go a long way toward rebuilding our homes. To be on the board is to be part of the colonial community. And being cut off means slow strangulation. Uh, they treated you pretty roughly. Is it worth going back to that? I'm not a man to put pride before progress. If membership on the board can ease our hardships and provide us with opportunities, then that's the path I mean to pursue. Besides, I'm hopeful that additional leverage on our part will allow us a more equitable relationship. Bum, bum, bum. Leverage? Don't get ahead of yourself, sir. Yes, yes, it'll be easier to explain once we have the Bolt 52. My hope is to maintain the reforms we've managed here, and who knows? Perhaps once we're restored, we could spread them to other corporations. Oh, how sweet of you. Uh, what is the hazard clause? It's straight bullshit is what it is. A fabrication rich folks use to preserve their investments by leaving a lot of people here to die slow. Nyoka has the right of it. It's a legal provision that gives the board the authority to cordon off any planet or location that it deems dangerous. But wait, what happens to the folks stuck on the wrong side of dangerous? They die. Well, I'm afraid the welfare of a few hundred people is too minor a figure into the board's risk assessments. Wimp, wimp. Uh, and they evoked it on Monarch? Yes, making all of MSI criminals in the board's eyes. Rather hard to run a business that way. It is, actually. Uh, you didn't tell me that Hiram found the loophole. Well... Technically, he may have suggested it, but he certainly wasn't doing the paperwork himself. Uh, you were supposed to let Hiram control Devil's Peak. That was the deal. Technically, he does. What exactly are you accusing me of? Uh, you are not upholding your hand in the bargain. Now, now, there's no need to use that sultry tone with me. Hiram understands the way things are. After all, he has his own contacts on the board. Does Until he? Until we're back on the board, I need to run those advertisements. If there's no business on Monarch, then we all starve. Hiram included. Besides, Graham's the one you should really be concerned about. His propaganda does nothing but crowd the frequency. 
I guess we'll have to deal with that. What can I do for you? Uh, nothing. Alright, so we need to go back outside. Uh, I think we will work on, uh, Amber Heights and then get the Bolt 52. I think that's the best idea. Alright. Oh, we can just... I think we can just fast travel. I am pretty sure I unlocked everything. Oh, wait, what? Where am I? Oh, it's a bolt there? Oh, okay. Um, No, let's... Because we're going to have to come back here anyway. So let's go ahead and do what I thought. Uh, Amber Heights. Accept. All right. Let's... Ooh, stuff. Stuff and things. I'll take things and stuff. Who doesn't like more things? Let's enter Amber Heights. <gasps> Ooh, hello. Uh, who are you? Rose? Well, hello. And welcome to the home of the Iconoclasts. I'm Rose. Please, take a pamphlet. I don't want one. In it, you'll find everything you need to know about Graham, his philosophist truths, and the iconoclast way. He wrote it himself, you know. Did he now? Oh, oh no, I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting. We're out of pamphlets. Gosh, blast it. Um, who are the iconoclast? Why, we're the only free people in Halcyon. No corporations, no shackles, no problems. Oh, I doubt that. Very seriously. Uh, no problems? What about raptodons? Or marauders? Oh, those are just hurdles. We deal with them as they come. You're welcome to stay with us, so long as you can earn your keep. Mmm. Uh, one big happy family, huh? That's a nice way to think about it. Graham would be our father. I suppose Zora might make a good mother if the two of them could stop arguing. Oh no! You can think of those two as our leaders, but they're more like examples. We all ought to be more like them. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me about Graham. Why, he's our founder. Graham taught us about philosophism. Through him, we came to the eternal truth. Uh-oh. I'm glad you're asking, by the way. I hope you'll consider staying. No. Uh, but you can tell me about Zora. She, well, she's been with us since the beginning. I think she was our sawbones back then, but now she's more like our commander. She goes and finds people in the wilderness and gets them to come here. And she keeps us from being chewed on and whatnot. Oh, that's nice of she's her. She's liable to take your head off if you screw up, but then she'll sew it back on for you. Oh, nice. Um, why are, uh, where can I find her? Graham's place is in the large building straight back. Zora's sometimes there talking with him, but usually she's in the triage clinic next door. I think I might just skip her. Um, why are you here and not in Stellar Bay? Oh, Graham settled here a long time ago. Shoot, I wish I had a pamphlet to give you. It's all in there. I wasn't around back then, but they say a lot of the old MSI corporate folks died here. <gasps> no. He calls it a spiritual metaphor. Something about rising from the ashes. Mm. Got it. Hey, before I go, I'm looking for a Tucker. Have you seen him? The new boy. Yes, he's quite clever. He took to our teachings very quickly. Last I saw him, he was headed into one of the buildings up the hill. I forgot. I need to look for Tucker for that lady. Um, matter of fact, let's go into our journal. Uh, is it space crime content? No. No. There you are. Okay. Let's find him. 60. Oh, he's right over here. Cool. I ought to mention, the Iconoclasts are loyal folk. Treat them right, they'll do the same. Turn on them, they'll open fire without a second thought. Everybody here looks wore out. Just me? It's just you. Okay, uh, where is he? He's in here. Oh, nope. 
Put away the gun. We're not we're not gunning right now. Hey Tucker. Are you Tucker? Looks Um I am Captain Mephistopheles. Welcome to Amber Heights, Captain. Call me Tucker. You here to join the iconoclasts? Help us free this world? You don't look like a child. <laughs> uh free from what? Well, from the yoke of corporate tyranny. It's what all us iconoclasts strive for, with Graham at the helm. We want unfettered freedom, not the lies that MSI tries to sell in Stellar Bay. True escape from all rules and constraints. You want to know more? Listen to Graham's broadcasts. He's been talking up a storm. Working Has he to now? elevate the minds of all the corporate drones in this colony. Getting them to rise up. Rrr. Uh, no rules? No limits? It sounds like a utopia. It is. Just look at what a paradise Amber Heights is. We could take this world... No. Galaxy-wide. You really should talk to Graham. I think you two would get along swell. Should I now? But you're Tucker. You're Agnes's little boy from Stellar Bay. I am not a little <laughs> boy. Haven't been one for decades, no matter what my mama wishes. I take it she's still looking for me? I'd hope she'd accept my decision. Uh, she made it seem like you were in danger and asked me to rescue you. According to her, stepping foot outside of the house in broad daylight is too dangerous. My entire life she crammed a fear of danger down my throat. Don't go play with friends. Vantasaurs will tear your arms off. Ooh. Don't leave the city. Raptodons will spit acid on your face. No. Marauders can violate you. <gasps> You'd fall in a sulfur pool. Gross. I stuck around way too long, ruled by her fears. I'm 42 years old, but she still sees Ooh. me as a little boy in need of her protection. Off for 42. I won't stand for it, I tell you. Um, ooh, should we persuade or should we intimidate? Uh, running away is for cowards. You need to face her and show her you've grown up. She doesn't want to see me as anything other than her baby boy. Why would I go back again? What'll be different this time? You're mean. Oh, yeah. Teach her the iconoclast philosophies. Convert her and she might join you in freedom. You're right. I can do this. Yeah. I just need to stand my ground and make her see she can't control me anymore. Yeah. No one can. You can do it. All right. Uh, we got that. Am I going back? Uh, yeah, we should. Let's go ahead and just do that real quick. Um, might as well. Um, oh, really? Are you gonna... Ah, there we go. Uh, no, not the unreliable interior. We're gonna fast travel straight to Stellar Bay. All right, where are you, lady? Uh, straight ahead, it appears. Oh, no, not straight ahead. Oh, she's inside. Okay. No? How do you get inside? She's in the... Oh, she's at the, in the chair. <laughs> Dummy. Uh, hello? Mama, ah. I told you that I'm not staying. I just came back to talk to you about why I left. Then I'm going back to Amber Heights. Oh, we'll get that silliness sorted out. You're safe here with me, <laughs> and that's how it's going to stay. Isn't that right? No. Uh... Your son is a grown man. It's time you started treating him like one. What a sour thing to say. My little boy will always need me. I'm his mama, you know. Okay. Mama, what I need is for you to listen to what I want for once. But that's between us. Now you promised the captain a reward, so settle up. Then you and me are gonna have a long talk. Wamp wamp. Here, kind stranger. This is every bit I've scrimped and scraped for years to save. But it's more than worth it to have my Tuk Tuk home tuk, safe tuk. again. Oh, Tuk Tuk. 
Uh, good luck to both of you. Sweet. Alright, family matters done. Let's go ahead and leave. Because it's easier to fast travel from outside. 